Welcome back guys! Can you believe it's episode 6 already? My god, really rattling through this. Right, uh, what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to do some flying. Now, we've got, we picked up a load of science in the last episode, but you know what? We're not actually going to use it right now. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to pop over to Mission Control. Ha. Hey, how you doing, Gene? My favourite bit. We're going to pick up a couple of tests that we're going to do, which is, <laughs> this is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to pick up we're going to test, um, let's see, we've got the uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the T45 swivel, uh, that's high altitude, no we're not going to do that one, what are we going to do, we're going to do uh, visual surveys of Kerbin, this is just literally fly somewhere, and, and, and that's it, you know, below, below 18,000, so you know, just, just fly some to a particular location, we'll take that one, uh, we're going to test the uh, radial mount parachute, now, for this thing, you've got to be over oh, over 13,000, but under 16,000 metres. So, a, f a fairly narrow band, and you've got to be between 200 and 700 metres per second. We'll take that. Oh, and we're going to test the M16 parachute as well. Uh, now, this thing's got to be between 6,000 and 14,000 metres, and between 400 and 900. Uh, testing those two together is a bit of a challenge, so we're going to do uh -huh. that. And we're also going to test the radial decoupler. Oh yeah, now this thing, you've got to be over 14,000 meters and between 200 and, 40, uh, and 400 meters per second, which is kind of just about within our bandwidth. So we're going to accept that. Woo, man, this is going to be challenging, guys. You guys wanted me to do something a bit challenging, so we're going to do something a bit challenging. Right, let's go over to the um, the uh, the space plane hangar, and we're going to build something pretty cool. Okay, here we are. So let's do it. Now, this is a beginner's guide, so um, I'm going to try and make these things pretty easy, but I'm also going to try and make it fun and interesting. And I said I wanted to do something challenging. The challenging thing for me here is to build a craft that's fun, interesting, and easy to be able to do these missions. And I think I've come up with something that you're going to like. Right, we're going to start off with a Mark I cockpit. And then we're going to add one science module. Now, we've got a parts limitation, so um, we're only going to be able to do one science experiment on this, unfortunately. But this is more about fulfilling uh, our contracts than getting science done. We can get science done later. We'll be doing lots of that. Don't worry. So, right, what next? Now, to get up to an altitude of um, 13 to 14,000 feet, we're going to need a combination of uh, rocket engines and jet engines. So... First, I'm going to take, or I'm going to try, oh, come on, don't mess around. There we go. Right, I'm going to put three of these T400 fuel tanks on here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. There we go. Right, and then I'm going to copy two of them. I'm going to go to symmetry mode, and I'm going to put, now, Star Wars fans are going to love this. Guess what it is yet? Oh, Star Wars Wi-Fi to anybody? This is gonna, I, I promise you guys, this is gonna look very cool. And it's really cool to fly, actually. I, well, I think. So, right, that's our, uh, that's our basic shape. Now we need to put some engines on this thing. And what we're gonna have, we're gonna have uh, a couple of um, J33 Weasleys. Come on, Weasleys. There we go, a couple of Weasleys, and then we're going to slap a, uh, a T-30 Reliant in the middle. Oh yeah, that should do the job very, very nicely. Now, we don't need um, oxidizer in these outside tanks, because the, the jet engines don't need them. So, what we're going to do, you want to make sure that you've got symmetry mode on. Right, and then um, right click on one of these. We want to knock the liquid fuel down to about 50%, take out the oxidizer completely. Now, because you've got symmetry mode on, if it's done it in this tank, it'll have done it in this tank, right? Then we do the same over here. We want about 50% of the liquid fuel and remove the oxidizer. We don't need the extra weight. We don't need the extra cost, right? And make sure it's done it with that one. Yes, it has. These three tanks we need 
the liquid fuel and the oxidizer for this engine. Okay, right. Now, now, I said we're struggling against a parts limit. We have a limit of 30 parts. Um, so we're not going to be doing a lot of um, scientific experiments because we can't spare the parts. We need to add things like, um, we can't fly around with these things like this. It, they're about as aerodynamic as a pig. So we're going to go to aerodynamics. We're going to pick up a couple of these aerodynamic nose cones. And again, with, uh, with symmetry mode on, we're going to pop these on here. Yes, all right. Behave. I know what they look like. Kids, ask your father. And let's go back here. Right, now we need to pop some wings and stuff on this. So we're going to kick off with a couple of Delta Deluxe winglets. So I'm going to bang on about there. Yeah, looking good. Then we want some uh, some nice cool tail fins, uh, which I'm going to pop on kind of. Now, it's gone into radial mode, right? Now, you can actually get out of radial mode. This is a bit of a, a bug kind of issue. So if you go forward, it'll go into mirror. Right? But if you bring it back here, it goes into radial symmetry. Right? But if we take these off, right, and then, and then if I can get them back on again. Come on, come on, come on. Go back on. There we go. You fight. Look, it's fixed it. Isn't that weird? Very weird. I'm going to angle those slightly. Not because they need to be angled, but just because it looks cooler. Love it. D uh, seriously, I think this plane looks absolutely awesome. We're going to take uh, our sweat wings. Now, this is, at this point, um, we, we'll fine-tune this later, but we need our, uh, our, our centre of lift behind our centre of mass. So we want our wings kind of back here-ish. Okay. Right, we need to put some landing gear on this. So we'll go to utility. No, the science, you bonehead. Uh, we'll go to utility. We'll pop just one. Yep, lovely. And we'll go around the back. Now, we may struggle to get these on. I may need to take the wings off and. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, see, it, it's kind of just where the wings need to be. So what we'll do, we'll just pop those wings off for a second, put them over there. Then we'll pop these on. Ah, oh, see, and it's turned this damn symmetry off. Right, so we'll pop these on. There looks about good to me. You want them in front of your uh, rear control surfaces. Just about there's good. Right, then let's take out wings again. And pop those on. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take them right, pretty much right back as far as I can. Yep, yeah, looking good. As, uh, you definitely want you to have your, your center of lift behind your center of gravity. Um, you'll find it nice and controllable then. If you have it if you have it in front, it'll spin like a top. You won't be able to fly the damn thing. Right, next, we need some um, some rear control surfaces so that we can actually steer this thing. So, go back to uh, aerodynamics, we'll take some elevons, and then it should just be the D key, just to rotate these. Come on. Come on, you darn things, you. There we go. Now we'll just move them out a little bit. Come on! Doesn't that look kind of cool? I think that looks really cool. I can't wait to uh, fly this damn thing. i got to say, uh, personally, I think this thing flies fairly nicely, especially for um, for novices. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty stable, easy-to-fly craft, I think. Cool. Now, a few more things we need to do. We need to check out... Uh, oh, we, oh, first of all... 
we're, we're doing two contracts. Where's our contracts? Our contracts are down here. Uh, well, we're actually doing three. One is just to fly to a particular place. The other two is to test out a couple of parachutes. One is a radial mounted, and one is our regular Mark 16. So we'll take our radial mounted, and we're going to pop that at the back. Right, in this, oh, and I only want one. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to pop one right there, right at the back. Just in, just in front of the just in front of the motor. Yeah, that's fine. Right then, now this is a bit of a botch, but it's kind of the only way you can do it because these Mark 16 parachutes, they expect to be mounted on like the front of a, a pod and they need a mounting point, right? So the only way you can do it is if you go to structural, you take one of these modular girder sections, oh, come here, and if we spin this round, just a, an S, and then if we pop it just about there, and you want it like so that it, it's actually kind of sunken into the, uh, the structure a little bit. Then you can take one of your Mark 16 parachutes and you can actually plop it on the front and it actually gives it a, a tiny bit of uh, aerodynamics. It's still about as aerodynamic as a pig, but um, we can live with it. We can live with it. I think we'll be able to do what we want to be able to do with this plane. In fact, I'm pretty damn sure we can. One more thing to check is our crew because you'd need a pilot for this. Like, you really need a pilot for this. Yes, we've got Jebediah Kerman. We could take Valentina. But, um, no, nah, we're going to go. We're going to go with Jebediah. What the hell? Right, okay. Um, yeah, we, we need to check our staging. Now, this is important. Uh, so, we want our parachutes in our first stage. And then we want our... We want this engine... So, actually, if we move this, oh, come on, we move these down to here, and then the rocket motor will move up to our first stage. So, we're going to have our jet engines fire, then we'll have our rocket motor fire, and then finally, we'll activate our parachutes when we meet at the criteria of our test contracts. Oh, man, I've got to say, kind of a fun build. It's, I think this is going to be a fun flight. Should we go do it? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Now it's time to put your money where your mouth is, isn't it? And actually fly this thing. Right. Let's put the brakes on. We'll take it to maximum thrust. We'll spin up our jet engines. We'll put uh, SAS on. That'll help help keep us um, straight and level. We'll take the brakes off. We will let it get up to about 80 meters per second, and then we're going to start pulling back gently on the stick, just gentle taps. Here we go. Here we go. And you want to get it up to around about 20 degrees. And there we go. A nice gentle takeoff. Right. While we're gaining a little bit of altitude, we're going to go into map mode. And we're going to zoom in. And we're going to take a look at this. See this little icon over here? This is telling us our destination. This is site 18WQ. This is uh, where our contract told us we have to go. Right. So we're, we're currently headed in this direction. We're going to have to take a turn and go over there. So... Now, you want to be, uh, before you start pulling manoeuvres, you really want to be over 2,000 metres to be nice and safe. And what we're going to do, I'm going to level this off just a touch. There we go. And then, the way you turn these things is really, really easy. You roll with the Q and E key, and you literally just turn it on its side. Okay, almost on its side. And then you just pull back with the S key, right nice and gently little taps now you will lose a little bit of altitude when you execute these turns now 
want to bring it round to about there, I would think. Then, correct your roll. Oh, well, oh, bit heavy handed there. Pull her up a little bit. Correct that roll. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Let's have a look at our map. How are we doing? Yep. Might have come round maybe a tiny bit more. Maybe a tiny bit more. So, again, we just pop it onto its side. Pull back a little bit. The S key. There we go. Correct that roll. Nice and gently. And pull the nose up. There we go. Very easy to fly. You, you probably need a little bit of practice. But, um, yeah, it's very, very easy to fly. Very, very stable, this thing. I find this um, a pleasure to fly. Right, let's uh, let's pull her up to about 15 degrees. There we go. Gain a little bit of altitude. Let's correct that wrong. Cool. How are we doing? Are we on target? Yep. Now, it'll come up here and tell you when you are in range of the uh, the site that we're headed for and our contract is up here let's, uh, let's put that on so um, take a crew report from this site any second now it should pop up here and tell us that we're entering the site on we must be here we go you are entering site 18 WQ right now we can go to our cockpit we can do a crew report take the data and boom contract fulfilled very nice cool right now we can kind of relax because all we're going to do is we're going to leave this thing on about 15 degrees and we're just going to let this thing climb. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this up to two times warp. Now, one thing I will say, uh, but first of all, don't go above two times warp. Well, I don't think it's a good idea for novices to go above two times warp when you're flying. Because these things can spin out of control really, really easily. And don't make any maneuvers uh, on anything but one times warp. So all we're going to let this do is just climb up to about, we want to get up to about 10, 10 and a half thousand meters. Uh, and then we're going to kick in our jet engine. So um, yeah, let's, um, let's just let this carry on climbing. Okay, we've just passed nine and a half thousand. Uh, I'm going to drop this down to one times warp now. Now, if you go over to here and you scroll down, these two contracts, you can actually get the, the important criteria for both contracts on the same screen. And that is the altitude and the speed. Forget about the Kerbin and the flying. We're, we're flying over Kerbin, so that's, that's okay. It's the altitude and the speed. We need to be over 400 meters per second and we need to be between 13 and 14,000 meters, which is pretty precise. Now what you're going to do, you, when you get to about 10 and a half thousand meters, you're going to kick in the rocket motor, and then the only thing that you're going to focus on is what your speed is and controlling your pitch to stay between 13 and 14,000 meters. So we're up to 10 and a half now. Let's kick in our rocket motor. And you'll see that our speed starts to fairly rapidly increase. We're up to 300 meters per second. And you can see our altitude is gradually increasing. We're up to 320. 330, we're passing the speed of sound. 340. We're up to 12,000. 360. Oh, this is just about perfect, guys. 380. We're passing 13,000. I'm going to push it for push the nose forward slightly. 
because we don't want to go too much higher than that. We're over. Right. Fire the parachutes. Kill the engines. Right. Did we meet both of our tests? Yes, we did. Test both parachutes. <laughs> now, let me tell you, if you try this, if you take it nice and easy like I did, you know, just a, a gentle climb, 15 degrees, right? Just let it get there, don't rush it. Get to 10,500, hit your engine, and then just focus on your altitude more than anything, and keep an eye on your speed, right? And then as soon as you get into the zone, hit that space bar and you're done. And right now, it's just a case of, um, of letting this thing slow down and float down to the ground. We'll we'll see if this thing actually survives. That'll be um, that'll be an interesting thing because I haven't actually tested this. We'll see if this can survive the landing, <laughs> which I'm not a hundred percent convinced about, because um, this is a fairly heavy thing. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, please survive. Here we go. I'm, I'm getting seriously, seriously nervous now because I'm thinking, because this is a pretty heavy craft to only come down with two parachutes. I should probably have used um, two radials. But we'll see. We'll see. Here we go. Oh, it's coming down tail first, quite quickly. Oh! That was quite a hard landing, but did Jebediah survive? Yes, Jebediah did survive, you know. Um, to be honest, most of the plane is intact. I'm, you know, I'm going to take that as an okay. Uh, if you're doing this, add 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 um, dual radial parachutes. I think that's probably a good idea. Right, let's observe the materials bay. Uh, we get one and a half signs. It's not very much, but it's okay. And uh, we can even get Jeb to pop out and do an EVA report. Uh, well, he doesn't get any science for that. Oh, it's from Kerbin's Highlands. I think we've already done Kerbin's Highlands. Right, let's um, get him on the ground then. Come on. Come on, get off. There we go. Actually, this might have survived if I'd actually had this on times one. What a bonehead. What a bonehead. Uh, okay, what do I want? Uh, uh, no, there's no science. There's no science. We've done it. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> a bit of fun. Bit of um, bit of a slightly broken plane. But yeah, we got all of our contracts done, and our pilot survived, and that's what's important. Let's uh, let's revert to to, uh, to base. Okay, so we've uh, we've recovered the vessel. Uh, we didn't get any science from the mission. Uh, how did we do on parts? Um, not not particularly well. And uh, we didn't get any uh, any crew reputation, but we did make our bunch of cash we've gone up from uh, 250,000 to like 340,000 so we made a good bunch of cash and if we go over here here are our fulfilled contracts which give us um, some science and reputation and cash excellent stuff so yeah uh, all in all not too bad let's get rid of those that's um yeah, I, I'm going to call that a qualified success, guys. Alrighty, you know what? Leave me a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see next time. I'm guessing, I don't know, like a moon probe or maybe orbit the moon or, I don't know, maybe another freaky space plane or something. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see and I'll see you next time. Peace out.